inside before I flip it over I'm going to get some of the modifications done on the inside and one of those is making the mass partner. Normally I had been making um, these things out of uh, three layers of the quarter inch leftover scrap but I've been using the scrap pretty heavily so I thought well I had this nice piece of uh, I think it smells like pine uh, in and it'll work function normally I'll make them also arched but uh, doesn't look bad in a flat. So it's, it's one of those things where you, where you fit it in, you know, you start out with a longer board and you just start using your pencil along the whole side to get the, the angle and then uh, start whittling it off on both sides until you get up to where you're in, in position. And then you'll see I've uh, put on the uh, center line and I've leveled the hole again. Uh, you can't see the level, of it, but that's okay. It's, it's tied down and level again. And I brought out my pencil bob to find the uh, center side to side with the boat uh, in balance and in position. And I've already drilled the uh, quarter inch holes and uh, restained them and put just a little bit of roundness on the, the holes on both sides to keep uh, in the future when you're putting the bolt in and out to keep it from ripping out the uh, wood. So I've got that in and I'm going to go ahead and, and start cutting out the hole. And just to give it a little bit of extra strength, I'm going to take some scrap plywood uh, and uh, laminate on the back to give the the hole or the uh, the uh, the mass partner here a little more strength because I'm going to put a pretty good size hole in it, and I want a little bit more of a, a backing in there. Even though uh, when the mast is pushing against it, it's pushing against one of these sides. Uh, it's either pushing this way into the hole or the other way into the hole. So. There's not a whole lot of up and down force on it. Even though I do have a couple brackets I'll stick in here for uh, turning blocks that'll hold the, uh, the mass, the top of the sail up and on, uh, on the yard arm when I use that, the top of the arm, yard arm up. Or if I'm doing the um, uh, sprit sail, then the uh, sprit pole gets held up on one side and the top of the main gets held on the other side. So let me go ahead and drill the holes and we'll come okay, back. I've got my hole cut in the mass partner. And I got my center line string above, it's out of, uh, out of range here right now. And then my uh, pl pencil bob is going down through the hole, through the center of the hole. And then you can see down here, I've got my, my cup for my mast. It's two inches inside diameter. It's just a standard uh, uh, PVC uh, pipe. I think it's a two inch plug, uh, but it's uh, two inches uh, on the inside diameter and I get two inch tubing for my masts and my sailboard masts all have a two inch outside diameter so they fit perfect in here. My little uh, piece of plywood here uh, will be my base and because I don't have the boat setting in the water I made it longer so I can move this fore and aft to um, once the boat's in the water and then I'll have a better idea of uh, keeping the mast vertical or if I want to change it a little bit. Uh, I can either drill one hole or a series of holes and move it around. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, butter up some uh, uh, easy fillet and stick underneath things and set it in place. One of the things too that you're probably asking yourself, how did I line up the holes on both sides when I was uh, making sure that this thing was square in the hole? Remember, we still have our station cut lines and there's one right here and there's one back here. So I measured equal distance back from each side. We did that when we put in this uh, longer block, a spacer block on the rails, uh, the one that was going to be used for the uh, mass partner. And then a measure back on each side to be sure that the uh, notch, which we put in, the siping marks when we put them in so that they would bend, would line up with that mark. And then also, uh, you can't see it now because I erased it, I also put a mark uh, halfway across the uh, board here to make certain that it was, make certain that it was uh, lined up on the center line. And then I transposed that line with my sliding uh, uh, scale up to the top and then across. And so that line went across here. And then that's how I make certain that this is square in the hole. Um, and then I put a little bit of bevel on the side. That's another one of those things where you, where you use your pencil to draw a line in order to uh, get the angle of the, uh, the rails as they come in this way because they're not flat and then there's a little bit of a tip to them. So there's a little bit of bevel on this side now. So I've got the, uh, the bottom plate for my mast shoe 
uh, yeah, easy fill it underneath and uh, it's curing now and uh, I'll come back later and uh, do some more with it but I probably won't set the screw into this until I get closer to being done and uh, maybe even have the interior painted uh, and I might not do this until after I've launched the boat and let it set and then maybe put the mast in and, and the rigging to see how that changes so when you mix up the, uh, the easy fillet or your wood filled epoxy for that uh, plate on the mast step uh, just butter up. I put I buttered up the uh, the bottom of the hole, and I put a big glob uh, of Easy Fill it on the back of the plate, and then I pressed it down, and make, being certain that I had it lined up and level, and I've also taken a uh, an old toothbrush, and I pulled all the uh, uh, taken a, a pliers and pulled all the brushes out. So now I have a nice little smooth rounded end that I can drag along and smooth out any of those edges on the wood filled epoxy uh, around uh, where I place things on sm for small radiuses and it's easy and gives you a nice finish just something to uh, pass on. I've got the mass partner back in place I've got the uh, uh, new piece of plywood the stiffener just to give it a little more strength uh, gel magic on the bottom and shaped now I've been marking out some of my, my jam cleats and my little turning block and I wanted to just drill some pilot holes mark them off with your uh, you know your sliding square and to get everything evened up but I wanted little pilot holes because now I'm going to take them off and then take out my, my regular old brace and bit and then drill some uh, holes on the back, back side in order to hide the uh, the nuts up in there so I have a little more of a finished uh, or a, a smooth bottom on it so they're not catching up on anything but also because uh, the screws that come with them are a little shorter than uh, the, than what I need to go all the way through and I had problems with the old peepop when I changed out the uh, the screws that when I tighten them down for longer ones when I tighten them down the, the, uh, the little uh, jaws didn't want to move freely so I'm going to go stick with the OEM screws so let me take this out and flip it We'll uh, put some holes on the bottom once I figure out how long they have to be. Yeah, I wanted to make certain that I uh, was able to get my nut driver down inside, so this would be the size for that screw. And I'm down um, on um, 9 16 is perfect, so I just did a test hole and I got me a, a piece of paper tape here for masking tape for my depth gauge. So that's says it's deep enough. We'll see when I pilot hole out with the, uh, the same size as the bolt. Uh, I can always come back in later but you, I wanted to be sure that I had the hole drilled first so that when, if I had to go in deeper I could go in and the, the bit sides will hold it in place as I go deeper. Okay I got it mounted and I've got it inset. You can see in there yeah and uh, I haven't got any washers. I got to go give me an, a flat washer and a lock washer to put in there, or I may change it out to an NSA, uh, NASA nut, uh, one of the nylock ones, to make it permanent. So I've got enough depth for that. So now I'll go ahead and finish everything else, and then once I get this all done, uh, then I'll take everything off and give it a good last sand, and then stain it, and then uh, epoxy coat it twice. Well, it's got it stained. But I haven't. Uh, put the epoxy on it yet. Uh, being pine it's not going to come out close to the color of the Maranthi on the rails and uh, at some later date uh, I may change this out but right now I'm trying to uh, <laughs> keep expenses down. Plan sales sir. So got that done we'll go on um, I think it's probably the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll do a final sanding on the inside. And